Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine. Salutare tuturor, bine v-am regăsit. Sunt interviurile Europa FM în preajma alegerilor europene cele mai importante din ultimii ani pentru noi și cu o situație politică complicată. Invitatul meu este directorul pentru media al Parlamentului European, domnul Jesus Carmona. Înainte, el a fost șeful de cabinet al președintelui Comisiei Europene, a președintelui Comisiei pentru Regiuni și purtător de cuvânt al președintelui Consiliului European. Domnul Cramonas este în România pentru a ne da datele esențiale ale acestor alegeri și mai ales perspectiva lor. Uh, hello, good afternoon, welcome to Romania. Good afternoon, thank you very much. So, I saw some polls uh, about the, the presence of the electorate to the European elections, uh, polls made, uh, made by the European Parliament. It's uh, quite a large presence expected, uh, around 60-70%. Isn't it too optimistic? Well, the polls are polls. So we need to, to see how this evolved in the coming uh, weeks, the coming months, before the elections, because normally the results always differ a bit about the polls. But what we see in the current polls that we are we are dealing with is that effectively there is a, a first winner for the elections, which is the EPP. The second one would be the Socialist uh, Party, And the battle will be for the third position. We don't know if uh, the Renew will continue to be the third party or other groups uh, will be there, ECR or identity. We have uh, also seen that uh, there are some extremist uh, party increasing their participation in some countries. But we have also positive news coming from Poland coming from Spain, in which uh, extremists have been reduced uh, their, their participation in the, uh, in the projection seats. But for the first time, it's very possible that Romania will send in the European Parliament a very large group of populists, let's say extremists, maybe some 20 persons from an extremist party. Uh, this is something that worries you? It worries us in the sense that uh, every time that we are talking about extremists and maybe anti-European movement, this could make our uh, taking of decisions very difficult in the European Parliament. We need to think that there are enormous challenging challenges uh, before us. After the elections, we don't know what's going to happen in the US in terms of uh, presidential elections, who is going to win. If uh, this is going to be Donald Trump, maybe we will need to reshift our policies in terms of defense, in terms of external relations. And at the same time, we are going to pass a big number of legislation that are still in the pipeline. Let's talk about climate change, about immigration files, about enlargement, and having a majority which is able to pass these legislations will be essential. Let me say to you that uh, in the last three years, for the first time in the history of uh, Romania, which was a very optimistic country for, uh, for the European Union, the polls show that uh, in the Romanians, the trust in European Union has uh, swiftly descended. So we were around 71 people who 71% of people who said that uh, the European Union is a good thing and now we are around 46%. Why do you think this happened in the well, last three years? What uh, we need to do uh, is to to make a uh, citizens Romanian citizens aware of the impact that the European Union is having in their lives. Is not uh, because of their polls that the reality is not there. What uh, we see is that the European Union is having a transformative effect in the daily life of citizens. Yes, in and it was largely polls. criticized here. We just had farmers' protests in Romania. They are not agreeing with the proposals of, of uh, green policies. They are not agreeing with the Green Deal. And also they want for higher subventions. And what are you going to say to them? because they were on the streets uh, till two weeks ago? Yeah, not only in Romania. They were in Brussels uh, two weeks yeah. ago, in Spain, everywhere. So what we need is to listen eh, to their complaints, because maybe at the time that we decided on the goals of the climate change, we didn't take into account their legitimate 
interests. So we cannot uh, develop uh, policies at European Union level without uh, listening all parties involved. And this could be, in my view, part of the, um, the, the work that will be taken the new parliament. They strongly asked for cutting the, the, the Green Deal's uh, proposals. Uh, would you agree with this? Well, what I can see is that in general terms, European citizens agree with the objectives of climate change, agree with the general objectives of uh, having a green transition. At the same time, we cannot reach these objectives without, without having in board farmers and, uh, and the citizens as well. So if there are concerns, I'm sure that the Commission and the Parliament has sent a resolution in this sense to the Commission to revisit the, uh, the green policy to take into account their demands. The other thing they said it's regarding su uh, subventions. Uh, so Romanians think that the, the money they have from Europe is uh, a very small amount uh, compared to the, you know, France, Poland, Germany and so on. Is there any chance for the Romanian farmers to have higher subsidies from the European Union? The European Union is a place in which everything is on the table. Anything could be discussed when there are legitimate interests eh, behind that. So if there is uh, complaints, if there is a specific requests regarding subventions or agriculture demands, this needs to be put on the table. First, on the table of the ministers, because they are the ones deciding on agriculture policy. Your minister of agriculture will have a say at the time that this is being discussed at the council level and then in the European Parliament as well, as colleges later. But when there is an issue at European level, the advantage of Europe is this this can be discussed in a democratic way to find solutions. Now I'm coming back to what you said, uh, said there, that uh, maybe you're going to have some changes in the defense area. Because here in Romania, we are at the borders of the European Union, and it's very possible to have a very hostile force near us. It's Russia. Uh, will you have a commissioner for defense in Europe in the next mandate? This idea of having a commissioner of defense is an idea that is floating around. So why not? In fact, the situation in Europe has dramatically changed in terms of uh, this uh, aspect of creating a stronger defense for the European Union. Due to the invasion, to the illegal invasion of Russia to Ukraine, it has been an unprecedented unity in terms of uh, European defense of Ukraine. Let's remember that now Ukraine has status of candidate to become a member of the European Union and at the same time in terms of sanctioning Russia. So for that, there has been a strong unity. The same goes in the direction of reinforcing our defense capabilities. What Because can you say to, to the Romanians? Uh, is possible for European Union to, to defend us in case of hostile actions from the Russian part? Well, Romania as a NATO country, as a European Union country, indeed is under the umbrella of protection of both NATO and the European Union. So no one, no one could have in mind that uh, Romania could not be protected. Uh, in terms of election, which will take place on uh, 9th of June, Uh, there is a political idea here in Romania. There is a debate that uh, they'll have to be united or take place in the same time with the local elections. Is it possible from your part? Well, from my point of view, I'm, I'm having, uh, uh, I would say, mixed feelings on this question. We need to look to two sides of the same coin. If uh, the elections, the local elections, take place at the same time that the European elections, this could help to increase the turnout for the European elections, which is good. Okay. But on the other side, on the other side, and this is very important as well, we would be missing an opportunity to discuss about European affairs because the campaign will focus on local elections. And it is so important, the challenges that we are facing now in Europe, that it will be missed opportunity not having a proper debate 
about the future of Europe and the challenges we are facing. Um, I have just uh, other two questions for you. Uh, there is a trend in Romania, that, and people are asking every time, even on my show, which is a phone-in show, they say, what Europe gave to me, you know? Just a simple thing to tell them what Europe gave to me in my home city. I know, something to put your hand on. What would you answer to this? I would say plenty of things. I'm not, I'm just not talking about stability, peace, security, which is very important. But look around you. I would say to the citizen, look around your hospital. Maybe you don't know that this hospital has been built, transformed due to European money. Look around your highways, your train stations, your airport. Behind that, there is concrete money from the European Union. Look around your schools. It's not only eh, pieces of legislation that we are adopting, but concrete things. Look around the quality of water you are drinking. This is because there are European standards that oblige eh, to have quality water, quality of air. So Europe is becoming more and more present in our daily lives of everyone. So it's not only legislation, but also impact on, on, on our everyday business. Nevertheless, many Romanians think that we are, uh, you know, uh, second citizens of Europe. And one of the huge disappointments is the access of Romania in Schengen space. So this was a failure of Romania or of the European Union? It's a failure of the European Union. And I agree eh, with that statement. The European Parliament has always been supported of Romania and Bulgaria being part of Schengen. There were some problems or some member states who did not agree. Hopefully the situation has changed, so there's an agreement now eh, for uh, lifting eh, the air and maritime borders in March. So in one month time, this will be lifted. Hopefully the land borders will be lifted very soon. I would say that we are on the right track on that particular issue. Very soon, meaning in terms of this year, next year, or... I don't know, because again, this does not belong to the European Parliament decision makers. We are very clear on that. It should have been lifted years ago. The problem raised in some member states, but now that uh, they have risen uh, the question of uh, lifting the, the, the air and maritime borders, land borders will be the next step. It will be a question of months, in my view. A question of month? months? Months. Months. Thank you very much. Thank you. Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine.